Welcome back. We have Dr. Sandy Jamison joining us on the show from the Cat Hospital of Kamloops. Welcome back to the show. Thank you. Yeah, we Pleasure have to be here. Kitty joining us as well. Yes, yes. He's a big boy, this kitty cat. Uh, maybe we can get a close-up of him. Uh, I guess we will in just a second. Um, but we're talking uh, today about urinary tract obstructions. Uh, I'm assuming that Kitty had one. He did. Yeah, two nights ago, uh, just at the end of the day, owner came in and said, oh, my guy's not sick. He hasn't eaten in two days, and he's just not feeling well. And so uh, I checked him over, and uh, when you put a little bit of uh, uh, manual pressure on the bladder, this guy was upset. His bladder was very full. And because I've been in practice a long time, you, you're pretty sure you know what it is. Mm -hmm. So he had a urinary obstruction, which is a serious problem, because when they can't urinate, what happens is the, um, there's a backflow from the bladder to the kidneys, and when the kidneys can't produce urine, filter the blood, it backs up into the bloodstream and you have all these waste products building up in the bloodstream, and that's a very sick cat. Okay, but can you tell by looking at cat waste, talk about how cats are so secretive and quiet, you don't know what's going on, uh, would we be able to tell with a, a cat that has a urinary tract obstruction? You wouldn't know. Mm. You wouldn't know, you would just say he's sick. A lot of times, uh, I mean, they do present differently. Sometimes they'll come in and the owner's saying, he's, uh, he's been trying to go to the litter box for the last two days, he just keeps going, keeps going, keeps going, and nothing's coming out and you know, down they come. Or he's just not acting well, or s some of them will be crying in pain. They're just sitting there and start crying in pain. So it is all different, but I mean, I have the advantage of experience and, and, and you kind of know. When you hear the story, the presenting story, have a little check on them, you say, eh. There we go, mm -hmm. that's what we've got. Right, and you can see these things right away. Yep. Uh, we have some charts, let's check them out. We can see what we're talking about here. Now what you see there is at the top, you see that the two circles are the kidneys. They've got Ks on them and they filter the blood and they produce urine. The urine comes down from the kidneys into the bladder and then the bladder, the, the waste products collect in the bladder, that's the urine. And then when the bladder fills up enough, then it comes out the penis, which is at the bottom. And of course that's an enlarged version of the penis. Mm -hmm. So the problem here is that um, these, um, a matrix of, um, sand and some protein and so on collects in the bladder and then when he goes to urinate it goes all the way down and almost makes it out but it, the penis narrows and where it narrows is that's where we get the obstruction mm -hmm. and so it plugs up there and then it's serious because then it starts going right back and that's why they're they're sick because the waste products are building up in the bloodstream okay uh ne next chart we'll see what this one's about so th this is like brand new, as I was saying, that this is a treatment that isn't even in the books yet. It's so new. And it's to use laser. And you see on the right-hand side of the screen, it says reduce pain, reduce inflammation, increase speed of healing. Well, instead of having to pass a catheter on these guys, and of course we have to give them an anesthetic, we don't pass a catheter now. We use this laser, and we laser right where they have the obstruction and it relaxes the muscles there, and we're able to relieve the obstruction without having to pass a catheter. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely incredible. A procedure that might have taken a whole hour for us to go through passing the catheter and every, this is a picture of us lasering. So, and this was us lasering right then and there, lasering at the area of the penis to, to relax things so that this plug would come out. But anyway, so uh, it, in the end, I mean, it was maybe a 10, 15 minute procedure before he was fully uh, relieved instead of passing a catheter uh, the old-fashioned way and having to flush the bladder and so on sure. which might even take an hour so far less jarring for the cat first of all like far less intrusive um, and faster so th those are huge things the intrusion is the big one because the the thing about the whole issue it, apart from the plug and the and backup of waste is that the catheter irritates the inside of the urethra that's already been irritated because he's plugged up with all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So now we don't have to pass the catheter. I mean, it's fantastic. Yeah, that's huge. Yeah. How often do you see this? They tend to come in fits and starts. So you might see like three or four cats in a period of a couple of weeks, and then you don't see one for months, and then all of a sudden you see a rash of them again. Mm -hmm. And as much as I've been in practice for a long time, and they've been analyzing, trying to figure out why this happens, they still don't know why it happens. Mm -hmm. But f food has a lot to do with it. If they're on a, a poor quality diet, uh, I find that I'll change the diet when these cats are getting better, send them home on a good quality diet, and they don't come back again, ever. Fantastic. Yeah. Good. Anything else you'd like to add today? Well, um, nutrition, 
Nutrition, nutrition, I mean, I see it all the time. I see cats coming in where the owners are saying, you know, you convinced me to get them on a good food, and now I'm looking at my cat, and you see a difference in the coat. Mm -hmm. And the, the reason that I'm on, big on nutrition is, sure, it's nice to have a nice coat, but it reflects what's going on in the whole body. If they're healthy on a good, healthy diet, then they're going to end up saving a lot of money on their cat's uh, veterinary bills simply because he's going to be healthy. Mm -hmm. And so preventive medicine, preventive medicine, good quality food, and deworming. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of cats come to me, they've been hunting and so on, and they haven't dewormed in years. And when a cat is going outdoors, even walking on the ground, they're getting intestinal parasites. They walk on the ground, get the parasite eggs on their feet, groom themselves, and they get them. Yeah. But then if they're hunting, they're getting the source of those parasitic eggs, so it's right. even more direct. Right. Hey, kitty, you wanting to go home? I think so. He's a sweetheart, though. Thank you for yeah, being here you're today. You're welcome. My pleasure. If you have any questions about this topic, you can certainly contact Dr. Jameson. Information is on the screen. You can go to Facebook as well. Uh, Cat Hospital of Kamloops, the phone number, 236-425-1111. We are back in two minutes. Stay with us.